Well, the calf rescue was success. We got him in there. I'm just glad to see him standing up. I actually tubed him last night uh, about almost 10 o'clock. He, uh, we don't know if he's preemie. We ain't real sure what's going on with him. He wasn't standing up. Mom was there with him the whole time. She had a ton of milk, but he's real wobbly. See him kind of trying to walk around. He's, I'm just glad to see him walking around. I got him to, I probably got him to take just a little bit of milk last night with the tube. I'm going to go in here and we're going to mix up another bottle. But he's a, he's a bow-legged little joker. I don't know if y'all can see it from the video. His front legs are super bow-legged. I mean, he might have something wrong with him, but uh, I want to give him a, a chance. Uh, anyways, his mom was not happy. She was staying with him. She had been, she had been laying with him the whole time all night. So she never left him. She got a ton of milk too, which... He has not gotten any besides what I gave him last night. We made up a bottle. Uh, we're gonna try to get him to drink the bottle. If he don't take the bottle, we'll tube him. I'm not great at tubing, so dad here will probably, may let him do the tubing if we have to. Basically with the tube, you gotta get them to essentially swallow the end of the tube and you just put the stuff straight in their stomach. You don't give them an opportunity to, <laughs> to drink it. He didn't get any colostrum. Good morning, everybody. It's day two out here. Uh, I'm gonna mix him up a uh, <coughs> another bottle for this morning. Gave him about three feedings yesterday. Gonna keep giving him a good bit. And just try to get him strong enough to where you know we can probably try to put him back out with his mom because she is she is not happy i mean she's really looking for him it's good she's a very she's obviously a good mom okay all right, all right. i think we settled on the name <laughs> my buddy Derek. his his wife was out here yesterday <clears throat> she was checking him out and she said she named him forest and that seemed pretty fitting because he's so bow-legged, he needs braces. Come on, buddy, get up. Come on, let's see you get up. Come on, come on. Oh, man. And you just fold over. <laughs> hey, Forrest. How you doing this morning, Forrest? You little pit squeak. You are so tiny. Day three for everyone. Uh, if you're wondering a little update on Forrest, he took all his bottle this morning. I did go in there and I, I had to help him get up. He got up, he stood there, he, he drank his bottle, did, did good and, and he walked around a good bit, but he's got a long way to go. I, like I said, I'm definitely not considering him out of the, the, the woods just yet. He, he has a good bit of blood in his stool. It's not uncommon but he's got like, quite a bit in there. It's uh, concerning at this point. So, you know, I've talked to my cousin some about him, who's Bobby Lee at Hurricane Creek Farms. He's a veterinarian and- Check it out. Dun, dun, dun. We are potentially gonna spray today. Still having issues out of my trailer. This thing is just not wanting to prime up. And it actually was pumping back in there. Some people might be like, well, dude, look at your, your hose. It's got enough for it to get through because it'll get through there. That hose blew and it, I can't, I have not had any luck finding the actual hose it needs. So we kind of had to jerry rig it, but it worked all pretty much all season like that. But I don't know. I just, I can't figure out what's going on with it as far as priming. And it even was pulling the antifreeze that I had in there. It was pulling it out of the induction tank and putting it into the tank. 
So that's got me really scared because I can't have it doing that. So we got our honcho here sharpened. This is kind of my burn down. It's gonna be a honcho is generic roundup or glyphosate for everybody. The boogeyman of chemicals right now, but honcho's generic roundup sharpen this is just if you have like mare's tail or something really bad sharpen is the stuff to go with the active ingredients for anybody wondering but uh <laughs> this stuff is expensive as crap this is the most expensive chemical we use but it's bad to the bone i'll top load the sprayer if i have to if i will feel more confident doing it that that way so this Ingenia back here, this is our dicamba. The dicamba. Probably, maybe our last year to use that stuff, but we were able to get it, and they're gonna let us use it. That's enough for two tank loads, which is all I can carry of water. We got, it's 12 and a half gallons. I'm putting down 12 and a half gallons in a tank, not, not 12 and a half gallons per acre. Putting down 32 ounces per acre of Roundup or the Honcho, and I'm just putting down an ounce to an ounce and a half per acre of Sharpen. And uh, I'll put down a seed oil as well. That's about half the rate or less of the Roundup, but that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 gallons. So 12 and a half gallons per tank. It's 25 gallons for two tanks. That's all I can haul. So that's all I'm putting on there right now. It's go time to try her out. I'm gonna top load it because I'm a little leery of my trailer still, but here we are. We set up, ready to go. Uh, I'm on, I think it'll prime up now. I hope. Got it out here. We're gonna find out. It's uh, it should prime up. I believe it will. I think with a bunch of water in it. I think it was just having a hard time getting enough water to really prime. So I'm gonna try it. up there actually I think what I'm gonna start doing is trying to set them up right there because I can reach them from the other side but uh, as long as my trailer will keep pumping we're doing good right now so we're up to 500 gallons I've been doing 750 gallon loads normally but on the first spraying I always go more because I want to I've got clean water in the tips so I like to let it I run about 15 gallons through it to be sure I'm putting down chemical. Because <coughs> I have started spraying before without doing that and it won't do anything for about the first two or three acres. Because you're basically just spraying water. So I like to uh, get some going through there first. Heck, I'm, I'm pretty fired up. Hope we get out here, everything does good. Hey, you know, we might blow a hose. I ain't gonna get mad. This is what it is. Uh, 
I was gonna try to video spraying around the edge, but I decided I didn't want to destroy my boom over here, so I just used the right side, like I told y'all, keep it to the edge. Um, I'm going over this this farm is pretty unlevel in a lot of spots back here, so I'm having to keep on the buttons from time to time, but you can see overall. It's just kind of a it's kind of a hilly farm. This is my my farm out here. This is where the store is. It's a, a big field. For now, this is going to stay row crop until we get to a point where maybe it needs to be all geared for the farm store. But um, oh me, get in the ground. I've been looking for deer sheds too. I'm I'm always on the prowl of them when I'm in the sprayer. This is where I find most of my my sheds but it's hard as you can tell when, it, when you got corn stalks it is really hard to find them but i'll show you guys just auto steer in case you had never seen it when i get to the end here I, I like to turn off the booms i hit the button turn them off this camera is going to mess me up a little bit i got a backup so i didn't make that turn good enough the things we do for the camera guys you know can't make my turns all right, so you see that white line here? I gotta get kind of line back up towards it on the next one where it's obviously where it's blue, it hasn't been sprayed. I hit my button down here, go ahead and turn my booms back on, and you'll see it, it'll start painting the screen. And you can see it's pretty unlevel here, so I'm gonna kind of go slow. I won't get on the button, be raising that boom up. You gotta let her down because it wants to go way up in the air. That's where, I mean, it's nice the auto boom height, especially if you got a really flat field, but you still gotta use the buttons a good bit on this pretty unlevel terrain. I'm spraying 15 gallons per acre. I have my field view stuff on my iPad here, but I don't have it set up right apparently because it was saying I'd only sprayed like two acres and it was really tiny looking on the sprayer. So I got something set up wrong because I had sprayed probably 30 acres and it said I sprayed two. But got 263 gallons left according to that. It's about 60 acres over here in this field. So I'll, I'll have to go back over and fill back up. I should run out with about 10 acres to go over here. I'm getting across 50 acres at a time. <clears throat> kind of show you the screen here. Here's one of mine. Um, let's see. see. This shows you everything. There's my fuel, speed, engine hours, RPMs, rate. This is your pressure on your lines. This is your rate. Um, we'll get to the end here. This is the screen that I use a lot. It's got all your stuff on the side right there. This is where I typically run. It's kind of cool. This this farm has been no-tilled now ever since I've been working it. I started working it before I bought it. And uh, this farm had been obliterated. Um, it had been mined really hard. And so I've, I've basically been trying to rebuild this thing with cover crops, lots of rotation. Because this is the second or third time I've had corn on it. I've been rotating it almost beans and corn, beans and corn, dang near every year. Just trying to get this thing built back up because it was hurting hit so hard. And uh, it's a process, it's a very slow process, but it has been no-till the whole time too, which is pretty cool to me. I like seeing that. I've got some ditches that are bad and I've got some ditches that have improved with the no-till and the cover crop. I can tell this year I don't think I had near the wash that I've had on it. Probably a lot of that would be to some of the cover crop which I didn't get a good stand because I told y'all my they actually put it down um, after I had shelled the corn and that's not how I like to do it.
can see here, this is my gallons in the tank, 76. When it gets to about 60, I like to turn off my, uh, I like to shut off my agitator. It's because that's, that's circulating a lot of water through there and uh, kind of takes away. I, I try to not run the pump dry, basically is what I'm getting at. So we're at 62 gallons. I'm going to go ahead and flip that off. That's the agitator switch. I like to turn that off. I'm going to fold her up and go refill. I, I can usually kind of tell that it's about to run out because on my, my rate here, it'll start, I'll see it starting to kind of fall a little bit. And when I see that, I'll go ahead and shut it off, turn my pump off. Just, I mean, you're not going to like tear the sprayer up if <clears throat> you run it and it flashes and says that you're empty. That happens a lot. I just try to minimize as often as that happens. Sharpen really goes in, I like to put it in first. Glyphosate is pretty cheap. It's per acre. Um, I think it's around three fifty to four dollars an acre. This burn down's around nine dollars or so per acre. So it's pretty wild when you think about the fact that. Out here, I should spray about 100 acres just today because I'm getting out here testing out. So just today, that will be over $9,000 we'll be spending. And this is the cheapest thing that will spray is burn down. The rest gets more and more expensive. Just finished up spraying out here. It's uh, 5 o'clock, 5.07. I wanted to highlight a few things real quick. This is my iPad mount. In case anybody was wondering, man, what is that? It's Ram mounts. They are awesome. I don't. I I would like to say they're made in USA. I don't know. I mean, they're probably not. But uh, if it was, I feel like it would say it somewhere on there. And they might be. I hope they are because their mounts are awesome. But that's the iPad mount that I use. It's a Ram mount. And I wanted to show you guys something real quick. Now I was late to the party on these things. This little dude right here goes in the cigarette lighter, just like so, which I got it turned, the tractor turned off right now, or the sprayer turned off, but uh, it Bluetooths to the radio so you can jam your tunes in the tractor, the sprayer or combine, whatever you're in. This combine don't have Bluetooth. I don't hardly ever listen to the radio because I get sick and tired of all the commercials and everything. But uh, Bennett, that used to work for us here, he had one of them things. And I was like, what is that? And I love it. I got one in my combine. I got one in here. I got several of them things. And I even got one in my track hoe. I use the crap out of those. You can listen to your audiobooks, podcasts, or whatever music you actually want to listen to. Uh, they're, I don't know what they're called, but you can look them up. This is a auto tech. But you could look up like a cigarette lighter, Bluetooth player, just Google it or something, find you one. I, think they, I might even got that one at Walmart. So they're out there. Guys, I am done and it is smoky as crap. I don't know what somebody's burning. Y'all see that smoke? Look at all this smoke smoking us out up here. Yeah, they are severely stinking it up over here with that smoke. I don't know what they're burning. That was a, a good day of trial on the sprayer. Looks good. That's, uh, I was about to say, I see a leak, but I believe she, well, oh, that's my, uh, okay, good. It's my air conditioner. I was about to say, oh no, we do got a leak, but that's the air conditioner where it's been running, thankfully. That had me getting nervous. I'm about to say, dang, man, I hear I was about to praise the machine for doing great. But uh, yeah, that's the condensation coming off from the air conditioner. There's no, I don't see any leaks. Had no problem with any of the tips. All the tips were spraying great. 
the winterizing was successful. I was actually just hearing a story today uh, about some guys that apparently, I don't know if they forgot to winterize their sprayers. They have three, they're apparently big cotton guys, but they either forgot to winterize them, thought somebody else did it, something, but um, I think they're gonna have to spend about seven grand a pop on the sprayers. Um, so they got three of them, so that's $21,000. Everything looks good on here. The winterizing did well. When we can come time to do that late in this season, I'll show you all how we do all that. Best thing about a sprayer is you can really cover some ground. I mean, I sprayed basically a hundred acres and by myself, and that took me a couple hours, but uh, this is very unlevel terrain. If you got good flat running, you can spray a hundred acres in no time, especially if you have somebody helping you on the truck. But it's just me, I'm out here. Got her done. Appreciate y'all for watching. Comment below if you got any questions for me, anything about the sprayer, about the chemical, anything I can explain on that, uh, feel free to comment that below. Anything you'd like for me to talk about, topics, movies, review, whatever, comment that below. Just let me think, uh, let me know what you think of the channel. And uh, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and share this, guys. It really helps. So we will catch you in the next video.